This is the Zortrax M300, a massive 3D printer with an equally large price tag, but can it hold its own in today's highly competitive 3D printing market? Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and this huge machine is the M300 produced by Zortrax, a Polish 3D printing company. Many of you may already be familiar with the M200, a popular machine often seen in schools and small offices. Well, the M300 takes the same design approach and steps it up to a much larger form factor. It has a print volume of 300 by 300 by 300 millimeters and a heated bed with an innovative contact point leveling system that so far has worked out well in my testing. The design has kind of an Ultimaker feel to it and one big fat ball screw for the Z-axis at the back, which is very nice. And the frame is aluminium, not sheet steel, which helps cut down some of the weight while maintaining high rigidity. But don't be fooled, this thing is still very heavy at 56 kilograms shipping weight. You'll need two people to move it around and we've just moved, so that's why it's sitting here and I'm sitting on the floor of the garage. The Zortrax has a proprietary design and ecosystem and in the past was quite locked down. For example, temperatures couldn't be adjusted in the software. However, that's now changed a little bit with the latest release of Z Suite, that is the Zortrax Slicer. You have to run Z Suite for this printer, which is a very different approach to the open G code printers like the Prusa i3s, for example. But the filament is a standard 1.75 millimeter diameter. And something I do appreciate is the larger spools that Zortrax supplies to suit the bigger print volume because a standard one kilogram spool does not go very far when you print huge things. Trust me, it's a whole different ball game. All right, so how is the 3D printing experience using the M300? Well, you load the Z code, not G code, into the machine via the included SD card. That's it, no Wi-Fi, which is a little bit disappointing for a machine in this price bracket, and the encoder wheel navigation similarly feels a little bit of an odd choice. It's something I could live with though, however, something needs to be said about the slicing speed of Z Suite. Oh boy, it takes the cake for the slowest slicer I've ever used, period. Granted, the latest beta is hugely improved and has some nice new features like customizable supports, but it's still the slowest I've ever used, which is a little bit frustrating when you're locked into the ecosystem. Low polygon count files will be fine. You won't, you won't really notice anything slower than usual. But once you start getting into larger sized STL files, it becomes painfully obvious just how poorly optimized Z Suite is even when run on a decent system compared to some other slicers I've used. It's actually so slow, I can actually start slicing, load up another slicer, put it the, si the same STL file into it and slice it before Z Suite has even made much progress at all. Um, this absolutely needs to be improved and fast because the M300 is a huge machine, so you want to send huge STL files to it. Saving to SD is also painfully slow for some reason, so improving this is priority number one. I threw my standard set of test files at the M300, started with the Gaia Anderson Cat and my tolerance test. Now, I did these two tests in the included HIPS filament, which stands for High Impact Polystyrene, and it's actually quite quickly becoming one of my favorite materials to run on this printer. The quality on medium settings is absolutely stunning. HIPS is an unusual choice and not very popular for 3D printing in general. However, I could learn to love it, to be honest. The smell is a bit nasty, similar to printing ABS, and the M300 has no air filtration system to help deal with fumes, uh, which you'll need to keep in mind. But warping wasn't on issue in the hips, and it can be solvent welded easily, and has a much better temperature resistance compared to PLA. So if you're into prop making, I would definitely consider printing with hips. Next was my tolerance gauge test um, at 0.19 millimeter layer heights. Weird, I know. Um, disappointingly, I only got down to 0.3. I couldn't get down any further, and it seized um, at point two. To really run the machine in, I tried their PETG printing this Skyrim inspired pole hammerhead on the lowest draft settings I could. And um, while some of the parts are printed okay, they're pretty stringy and not the most dimensionally stable. Um, but I think this is something more to do with how PETG behaves rather than the printing quality itself, the product quality of the printer. Um, but I did notice a little bit of under extrusion starting to occur on some of the parts. But overall, it's not too bad, but I don't think I'll be printing with PETG very much. As I said, HIPS gave me a better finish in the end. I was impressed, however, with how well the parts popped off their rafts. Oh, what's that? Rafts? 
Oh yes. Like its smaller brother, the M300 has a perforated non-removable print surface. This means you have to print with a raft every single time. Something like this. Now for larger prints, unfortunately, a large raft can add up to an hour print time and waste a lot of plastic. And while I do like to use rafts for complicated or fragile models, if you want to print a box, you still have to use a raft. So it's pretty wasteful. Further to get parts off the bed, you need to really hack at them with a scraper blade. Um, and it's great that the parts don't lift free during printing, but there's a lot of violent force on the printing surface while you're trying to release parts. And also, yeah, note that tiny connector. Don't slip. If the Z-axis wasn't so well built, I would be really concerned about damage over time doing this, but as yet, I have been able to avoid any serious issues. This lattice torture test and bunny with internal lattice really shows how accurate the M300 can reproduce parts when printing well, again, using hips. However, sadly, I did have my own fair share of issues to get reliable prints off the M300. It all started when I loaded up a roll of this, ZPLA Pro, the PLA supplied for the M300. This pretty much jammed the machine up instantly and without any form of filament detection, the print just kept boiling the jammed PLA in the nozzle and air printing for hours before I eventually caught it. Nothing I could do would bring print quality back up after this occurred. The subsequent prints, even other materials like hips, coming out like this, like spongy and terrible layer adhesion, just absolutely destroyed. So, um, in the end, I had to disassemble the hot end and change the nozzle, which did seem to fix it. However, even after this, some hips prints had the tendency to chew the filament the moment the machine stopped printing the raft. So basically, it would print the raft perfectly and then just start terribly uh, under extruding and the print would fail. So I can't actually think of anything more frustrating than printing three perfect rafts in a row with only, only to have the prints fail instantly each time. Anyway, uh, I reached out to Zortrax for comment and they said the PLA they use contains gypsum, which can lead to jamming. And the best practice is to purge with nylon before every PLA print. Um, also, they said the hips issues might be caused by in, in part by kink in the PTFE tube. But honestly, look, I think the PLA they provided just did a number on everything. Um, I'm never gonna use this again on this machine. And after I st stuck with hips for a while, the, p the problems went away. So I'll be printing with hips exclusively from now on, on the M300. For the final test, I decided to go all in with this scaled up version of Tanya Weisner's March Hair. This model is spectacular and a really big challenge to print, has various intersecting bodies as well in the STL file, which can mess with some slices, but Z-Suite repaired it perfectly and the total print time was around two and a half days at medium settings. Again, 0.19 layer heights. Yeah, the M300, is definitely not the fastest printer I've ever used. Actually, it's very, very slow, but keep in mind, it does have a very big print volume. And basically what I did is I left it to its own devices as I went away for the entire weekend. And I came back to this. It finished and man, does it look good. Honestly, the M300 did a fantastic job on this March hair. There's a few small discolored areas, which I will, um, I'll assume are caused by the filament slightly lifting up as it's printing and rubbing on the nozzle because the hips will burn to a nasty sort of dark brown. So I think that's where these sort of marks come from. But overall the print was great. The supports came off fairly easily. It's a complex model. They broke away pretty easily. And again, the raft came off easily too. And I'm really stoked with how well this model came out. It's not an easy print and the M300 nailed it. So what are my final thoughts on the M300? Well, this machine has the potential to produce incredible models. The software, while painfully slow, does a great job placing easily removable supports, although I would like the freedom to use other slices if I wanted to. However, for a machine in this price bracket and day and age, the lack of filament detection, Wi-Fi connectivity, and a filtration system to help deal with the fumes isn't really excusable. I mean, it's super, super easy for huge prints to run out of filament. This rabbit used 450 grams in it alone. And these are features that are now present in many machines direct from China. And sure, they don't have the same build quality as the M300, but it makes it a hard sell when you take into account the 4,000 US dollar price tag, or if you're in Australia, six and a half thousand dollar e That's pretty crazy. 
So a big thanks to Zortrax for sending the M300 to me for review and I eagerly await their feedback. And if you'd like to purchase one of these, I'll put purchase links in the video description. And if you enjoyed this video guys, when, why not subscribe? I love empowering your creativity by bringing you videos about 3D printing like this. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye. Uh, probably next video won't be me sitting on the floor though. There's a lot of stuff in this room. I have lots of work to do. <laughs> See you later guys.